episode three with Squatters Wrongs and we're moving away from politics in America and Trump and Biden for a while and we're going to dive into a mini series called Why Did They Do That? Why Did They Do That? And it's basically me looking at, I've had, I've had a few months now, I've been on furlough and um, had a lot of YouTube time and I fell into multiple rabbit holes, of course, about all kinds of things to do with our history and um, right now, I'm in a position where I'm going to question every single part of it. We're going to dis, we're going to suspend our disbelief when we have to. But to be honest, you don't have to do it that often. Once you kind of realise that big things changed um, all at once a lot during the 19th century, so all your 1800s through the 20th century, obviously with the uh, two world wars and everything else that went on, and now we're here. And if you look around, I mean, I live in Birmingham uh, in the UK, and everything's changed. Um, there's really weird stick out bits left from what we'll term the old world for now um, They just don't match the new things that they seem to be throwing up and obviously this all started back with brutalism when things got well things went really wrong with design and architecture and um, just the uh, what made it seem like the cities were a nice place to live as far as all the fancy architecture even through the Victorian times even the Edwardian times um, and nowadays what you're left with with all the technology we have now you would think that we could have much better buildings than we ever had before so I believe we had much bigger tech back in the day uh, which helped build these things and I don't know if we built them with our hands I can't tell anymore because if you just look at go to town now go into Birmingham go to your local city centre and just have a look at how much work's involved in throwing up these it's just steel structures with glass and general facade there's no building going on as far as I can see I mean don't get me wrong I'll have no idea what I'm doing when it comes to building a tower rock but um, when you watch it from far it is generally what you'd probably do cutting all the corners and making it as easy as possible obviously we've got a lot of money to save these days but apparently money wasn't an object then um, and you're building some amazing things for 80 grand which is a lot of money then but then when you divide that into the workforce that was required to build these things, according to the narrative, um, some of the 2,000 people it would take to build a building, maybe four years. It's a lot of money for that only to cost 78 grand. But that's just one uh, example, which isn't even in today's episode. But I'm going to basically dive straight in. We'll put some music on and uh, elevate our frequencies. We would like some nice music for a while there we go hopefully that's not too loud we just hopefully it's a little bit better than the background noise of my flat um, which is just this bloody laptops fan going off constantly um if we're going to dive in uh, with why i stumbled upon this today um it's not this window let's get it up there right let's shrink me down and we can make a start Right, we're all going, we're all going, levels are fine, sweet. So um, basically I've got the day off today, I've had the day off since March because of furlough, but today I've got a quiet house, everything's quiet, and um, so I thought I'd dive down a few holes. Um, I actually just wanted to go and look at some 18th century art, 19th century artwork, and just have a look on the Gallica website, and uh, which is brilliant by the way, and we're going to use that a lot. Um, but I came across this picture which is supposed to be uh, the place called Helgoland. Heligoland uh, is also a search term for this. I'm not sure which language took over in the end, but um, this picture is Helgoland in the Monlicht, which is uh, Helgoland in the Moonlight, a picture from insane time ago. So this is, uh, I believe it's 1851, this one's drawn. Yeah, this is 1851. Um, I mean, nearly 200 years ago. And I was just taken by just one, the lighthouse, these guys here looking quite World War II-y. So I'm not sure what they're up to. Um, they also look, it's also 1851, so they can't be, obviously not Romans, uh, but they have got helmets on. I'm not sure what they're up to. If he's getting shot off the side, if there's a little battle going on over here, who knows? But I just thought it was a very dramatic photo. Oh. Might be a spot of abseiling. Maybe. Who knows? 
Anyway, we'll zoom out. I was just found. I was just very intrigued by the whole thing. So, um, over here. Hopefully, I'm gonna have to move myself out of the way. Here we go. So just over here, um, there's a city or a town, a village, but something fairly big. That's probably a mile away at most, right? Depending. I mean, this is a picture. It's a, it's a painting, but uh, everything seems to be to scale. These people are to scale, so I'm going to assume these are all to scale. Um, it's a very impressive lighthouse for 1850, but we'll go into it. I have visited, I think it's a Roman lighthouse right down south in England by Kent. I can't remember the site. I think it was a uh, English heritage place. Um, but yeah, there was like, I think it was 20 AD. There's a lighthouse, which basically still all there as far as the stonework goes, very impressive. So these things last a long time and it's all down surely to the design. Uh, they can take a beating as you'll see. <laughs> throughout the rest of this. I mean, this isn't the lighthouse that survives the whole time, but lighthouses survive. It's a fact, it's a fact. Anyway, so we're gonna move on to where this is. Oh, I think my Google Earth actually crashed on me, so we'll hopefully get back on that soon. We'll get it back up. Um, hopefully we'll come back to that then. Is the internet gone? The internet can't be gone. Okay, Helgoland. Oh, I'm getting nothing out of that tab. Good. So we'll throw one up here. No stress, man. We're just chilling. This is uh, it's just everyone killing time. I'm going to move myself back over there. Oh, just over here. And maybe make me a bit smaller because I'm in the way. Okay. So we're going to go to the left. Oh, this is quite nice. We're going through the whole thing together. I can't be asked to edit this all out all the loading times, but hopefully it's not too boring because we've got some nice background music. Um, this is also only my third attempt at even doing this, and um, it might be a bit juddery, juddery, shuddery for a while, but hopefully I'll get better at it. Um, are we in the right place? Yes, so we're in Hegeland, Helgoland, uh, which is just off the coast of, I mean, you've got Denmark. Um, oh, can I go 2D? That's annoying. Germany. Oh, Rish, let's just go up, 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 up. So it's just here. Okay, just there, very small island. Um, the only juggery pointy outy piece of rock in that part of the North Sea on its own. Um, we can quickly, it's not gonna, It's not explaining it, this is not a fact run, this is just what I found out today whilst bored. <laughs> and there's just a lot, it's, it's been very interesting. So um, we're gonna look at what this piece of land is. And it looks like it falls into the Doggerland category, which seems to be a big mass of land that used to fill the majority of the North Sea area. Um, so here you can see, I mean, the shaded areas are kind of just the depths of the land beneath the sea. We just show you the extent of the land where it once was. Um, our place is still just here. You can see it there. So if we come down, interestingly, the whole thing that's really cool about this is this makes all travel from um, yeah, Germany, Europe, Denmark, everywhere. You could technically walk all the way to the tip of Scotland if you wanted. It looks like even the river just here, if I can zoom in, actually links up with the Thames. Just, just here. So all connected, we we're all connected at some point, which I'm, I'm sure we all have time for and know, because uh, this is all down to sea levels and ice caps and climate change of the past, which just uh, causes rapid and huge changes in water levels and there's which then brings on mudslides and all kinds of other things which then just change the landscape dramatically um so obviously you've got to think that this place was once connected to everything even though it's tiny and on its own now it wasn't always the case and you've got to bear that in mind when you find things there that are older than you'd expect which is the case with everywhere in the world everything's full of things that are older than they should be it's like america's full of ancient ruins and burial mounds and um, of course like the Balearic Islands, Spain, 
all of that old fertile crescent i mean we can go into this a lot more this is i have a distinct interest in this kind of stuff at the moment and i just want to put out what i'm looking at um, it's definitely not going to be the most not scientific obviously but just not the most straightforward thing to follow because i'm going to waffle a fair bit just because i'm a bit excited to be honest and i just want to have a crack at just going down or at least trying to research something one subject and maybe just show you how easy it is to just lose a day get rid of your tv license you don't need it just focus on um just our history and as people we've got a lot of time on our hands at the moment due to the current situation so why not get rid of your tv license bust your telly off the wall um haven't done that yet but um yeah just dive in into the internet i mean it's weird for me because to think how much information there is on the internet and everything we see on there someone has uploaded so there's going to be a lot of stuff that will never get uploaded a lot of it is uploaded by libraries massive billions and billions of files scanned through and they come up really good really worth a look on all of them to be honest it's always good high quality documents um but of course that gives the opportunity for them not to upload certain things that they come across which you know uh, book burning is not a new thing and if uh, you don't have to physically burn the books but just not digitize them i think that's where we're heading next anything they choose not to digitize we won't see in the future because i just don't think libraries and that are going to be a thing so really we should all be getting all the books in the world we can and taking as many photos as we can and just having it ready just backing up the libraries because who are we trusting to do that i don't know anyway so there's a, a nice picture of dogger land all joined up here so our place should be just around there yeah not a problem right so let's get back to the zoom zooms it's seen absolutely everything that could possibly happen uh, in this part of the world anyway it's seen everything this tiny island lots and lots of history very interesting great architecture a uh, great story but just uh, on the back of the Doggerland theory or whatever they want to call it, you can pretty obviously see what's going on. So here's all the land just slipping away underwater. And of course, this must have been connected to it at some point. It just makes complete sense. It's the only thing like it in the area that's left. So we're going to dive in and find out what the hell happened on Helgo Island. Um, hopefully this is in some form of palatable order but here's an old map from 1910 um, what I've gathered everything's pretty much in situ all the way up until 1945 when your boys in Britain get involved as always I bomb the shit out of it which is just seems to be every hole you go down the British get involved and ruin it destroy it hide it whatever they're trying to do it's consistent and it's getting quite boring and uh, I'm not ashamed to be British obviously but uh, it doesn't feel good half the time just when you see all this um, you just don't know the reasoning behind some of the things we've done to the world as far as face value so like we're just gonna show that anyway that this Helgoland is old as shit and there's things around that area which just back up the Doggerland theory and I think they're North Sea remains that have been found whilst uh, yeah, trawling boats have been fishing. So um, they've just revealed a few things that they've scooped up along the way. And uh, just here's a 13,000 year old bone fragment from a skull of an adult found in 2013. So uh, we can conf confirm there's people around. That's good news. Um, carved bones, arch. This is older than the, uh, the 13,000 year old bone. So we had RT students back then too. Um, the general narrative would probably just tell you that these people from that long ago were just hunter gatherers. There, there it is. There it is. Hunter gatherer community. No real brains. Just eat the food, catch the food, kill the food. Blah. That's it. Uh, maybe not even getting around to drinking milk yet because we're all so thick, right? But they were clever enough to carve bones. And uh, the amount of other things on this island, which we might attribute to them, coming up. You will have to suspend your disbelief a little bit, but I think 
once you get so far into falling down these holes, um, why not believe anything? Nothing is unbelievable at this point. Look around. Look around. It is currently out of the middle of, well, almost the middle of October 2020, so you might be in the same position as me, where um, you've just been furloughed and not working for months and months, and we've got a few more days left, and we all have to try and return to work regardless, and we'll see what happens. But um, I don't know if I'm ready. Are you? Just don't see the world the same anymore as it did in March. Here's some more bits and bobs. Uh, archaeology items recovered from the submerged lands of the North Sea over the years by fishermen all along the beaches include this cranium, jawbone, and upper arm. Mesolithic period. Right, 50,000 years old flints found in the area. Again, you're still only hunter gatherers. After 50, well, 30, 40,000 more years, you don't advance that much from there. I mean, that's the general story, apparently. Um, this is more towards the Netherlands, but it's just a general North Sea area. We just got to remember that it was full of land and history. And it's also been bombed to a higher hell during the two wars. So uh, a lot of it will be missing, broke apart, not in situ anymore, destroyed. Um, is that the byproduct of war that we're actually after? Do these wars just help us destroy things that don't make sense to us as humans? It's just a lot of it going on, even if you, um, just a recent example really, I just remember there was a war uh, against ISIS, I think that's the, the general narrative, narrative at the time, and it was all down in Aleppo. Um, with, ISIS destroying all the history and all the uh, biblical buildings and the prehistoric stuff that didn't line up with their narrative um, just being destroyed and I just think it always seems to be a big coincidence oh hello uh, oh, right sorry about the change of lighting the missus came home the dog got up everything went wrong and we're going back in I think it's been about two hours since we left off so I'm going to try and make this as smooth as possible. I believe I was talking about terrorism in Aleppo um, and just how um, yeah, the whole narrative of the armies around the world all kicking off just always seems to destroy really important old buildings and uh, no matter what story they want to tell us is the case it just seems like the overall blanket effect of all the wars is just a massive cover-up of history that we can't and won't explain. Maybe. That's just where I'm at because I think the official narrative is just so ridiculous and unbelievable compared, uh, then why not? So we're down to adverts now, so we're going to come out of this one and move on to a brief history of Heligoland and its people. Um, we're not going to completely just rip off everything this person's written, uh, but just a quick catch up. So this is how far back in history it does go. You've got a little bit here about uh, Tac Tacitus, the Roman historian, he used to call um, because of the two stacks of rock at the time, he used to call them the Columns of Hercules, uh, which would rise up north of Friesland. Um, originally, the red rock, which is the bit that's left, had a companion uh, made of sandstone, of white limestone, sorry, um, and throughout, so that's been recorded back in the Roman times. Um, and then there's a huge gap in the history, as you can see, where we just skip forward to the chalk being sold off because of hard times in the 15th century. I believe it was just down here. Yeah, broken down and sold as chalk. So that's all gone, nice and explained. And the rest got swept away in a storm in 1721, which, you know, I imagine is just written down by some kind of seafaring folk. And that's all the proof we have. But, um,. So that's why the island's such a bizarre shape. I don't know if I've still got it here, hopefully. Yeah. So these are the two parts. Uh, they seem to claim that this used to be uh, joined up by just kind of really low sandlands. Uh, eventually a big flood wiped that away in 1720, split them up. Uh, not sure where the missing limestone is or was, but as you can see, well you will see, the land around this area has changed quite dramatically throughout the very recent history, really. Whoop, that's my dog. 
is fed up with my shit. Right, so if we go back to the history. I don't want to give away too much because we're going to go on to what happened. It's it's the recent history that's the biggest red flag that's happened because uh, it's all very quick. You just think like this could go back to fifty thousand years ago, and in the last hundred. Um, it's all gone horribly wrong and the place is barely existent now. We're going to find out what happened. Right, so just going back on the Tacitus, the Roman guy. Uh, apparently there is a little board if you go and visit yourself. Which I haven't done yet, but hopefully will do after the, uh, the lockdown. Supposedly quite easy to get to. If we could just save this one for the... Uh, just a photo of the general land and this, this, the rock involved so you can get your head around that. Um, but here is just backing up the fact that apparently this island was seen as a religious sacred place a thousand years ago almost, right? So uh, over a thousand years ago, I'm sorry. So this place uh, just says here that it is an island in the ocean, there is a sacred grove. Within it is a consecrated chariot covered over with a garment. Now apparently there's other islands that could put their hand up to being this island that's described by Tacitus back in the day but uh, this should be the place apparently there's plenty of proof there to say that it was a sacred ground and uh, just looking at just how many people have always gone back there and it's, it's never been left uninhabited throughout even if they kicked all the people out during wars they always come back um, so the place has literally a rich history probably a longer history than most places really it's very confusing. Right, so we're just going to have a little look at this. This is an old drawing from 1886. Well, drawing, engraving. Okay, let me move myself out of the way. Oh, wrong one. Put it back. Me. Oh, wow. Me. There we go. Okay, so we have a little look around here. As you can see, this, I'm going to show you this brickwork in a moment, and it's insane. I don't know how many people they had working on this island at the time, but it's almost, I mean, it's more impressive, obviously, than even the train lines of Birmingham that run underground. Um, you can see all the brickwork that must have gone into that, even all the canal systems. Just the amount of work that people managed to get through at the time is astounding compared to now. I mean, we say this as we're all sat at home pretty much, apart from your key workers, um, doing bugger all. So yeah, not a lot going down on this end of the island, generally. Keeping it all over this side. There's your lighthouse from the, uh, the earlier drawing from 1851, the painting we saw. And nice little bay area. And they call this the Unterland and the Oderland. It's just that upper and lower. Um, we go and create a middle land, uh, but you can guess how that's created. But as you can see, even all the architecture is just lovely. Why am I moving that? Just over here lots and lots of maritime activity all the time it uses a defense base the big story is when the uh, hitler's regime took it over and uh, turned into a massive um for their u-boats they were um you'll see what they built to hide all the u-boats they put tunnels in there apparently all the people hid in the tunnels during the war and not many civilians died during the horrific bombing that was um sent down by the British. Mm -hmm. I thought the border on this was pretty exciting as well. There's a lot to see, so it's not, it seems to follow above water and the lower we go is below water, but I just thought the amount of effort they've put in, we may as well look at it. There you go, some people of the time period. This rock, barely on a fairly affected during all of the madness. Um, it seems like there's more arches here now. You can still see the arches. You'll see these in um, actual photographs from quite recent. And uh, yeah, it's quite hard to get your head around what this island was before, just down to all this side structure and how some of it stacked and arched and some didn't. But there's quite a lot, it's quite uniform and a lot of it looks like tunnel entrances. So it's quite hard looking at, is it lithographs? Uh, so this takes us underwater. So you can see there's treasures expected under there. Imagine this is all linked to the island when the artist did it at the time. Crushed off anchors, there you go. Holgoland. There you just 
all bits and bobs under the water. There you go. The crustacean. More maritime activity. Not sure if these are lobster boxes. I'm not sure what's going on there. They look a little bit like beehives as well, but who knows? Farming activity, maybe. Stacks from the other side at night. Uh, it's just lovely, isn't it? It is nice. All right. So there's a uh, maybe a view from afar. There you go. Or is that the um, the dune? That might be the other island. Or limestone or the other bit that the sand used to link to. It's a very scattered history that's quite hard to nail down because there's two major attacks on this island by the British and I can't seem to differentiate between the damage of the first attack and the second attack. But we'll go through it. We'll even witness it, which is exciting. Ah, right, I've got a dead window. Might have a few dead windows now, but we'll power on. Okay, where are we now? 1930, so this is still, this is after World War One, where it seems like it was used as a war base at the time and then disassembled due to the Treaty of Versailles, I believe, um, de-weaponized, back to people just living there, lots of um, I don't know if there was offshore power at this point, but that seems to be the major plan for this place in the end. Like I said, it's just a lot of activity. I don't know where the Zeppelins come in here, but uh, it's seen everything there is to see. And here's another drawing from 1890 to 1900. Again, before the major catastrophe started kicking off, so but before anything insane was built in a military sense too. So you can just see how it's just a nice island you've got. I believe the lifts in situ at this point, which we'll see in a moment. Actually, it might not be. Um, staircase going right up to the Oderland. And the Underland? Uberland? Not too sure. Uh, tunnels, tunnels everywhere. Lots of pirate activity back in the day. Uh, I think it was under British control then. And yeah, just used for all kinds, just like the coast of Cornwall. Rocky Mountains, lots of crags, loads of places to hide, get out of the way. Pirate life. Um, and why wouldn't you? It's bloody lovely. Can we go in a little bit? Yeah, brilliant. There you go. All these spires still I mean, look quite Christian as far as the religion on the island at this point. So it hasn't gone too far from when the Romans were mentioning it. There you go. Lots and lots of boats. Quite leisurely looking boats as well. Not too much freight activity by the looks of it. It just looks very pleasant. Another photo a bit later on, again, before the major catastrophes start kept ta taking place. Here is 1919, showing the fortifications. So this might be with the um, World War One equipment still in place before it was all dismantled or decommissioned. Oh, we could dive in. That's nice. Right. Camera work getting worse, the... Uh, the more modern we go. There we go. It's a big sea wall thing here. I don't know if it's to break the uh, the tides. Imagine how much of a beating that coast has taken over the years. But the wall will solve it. Right. So now we're going to go on to what we went and did to it. And I'm not. I don't know if it's my place to apologise for this, but. Again, like I said, it doesn't feel good being British, even American. Maybe just being part of the bloody, the Allies. <laughs> just seems like a, a bit of a weird side to be on. Sometimes, most of the time. But um, again, suspend your disbelief and just imagine that the whole point in these wars, no matter what the uh, what we're told, was purely to get rid of this history, very rich history of the. Uh, the ancient variety that they don't want us to know anymore. And um, maybe they're scared of the Enlightenment, I don't know. But it just seems like at the moment, especially in like these circumstances right now with um, the coronavirus and how everyone is reacting to, how you're supposed to react to it, depending on what news outlet you listen to, um, it's quite scary to think that everyone's still 
follows what they're told without questioning it when you can literally dive into anything like I just looked at a painting of an island and now I'm here and uh, it's all political it's all just dark it's, it's veiled with politics anyway and then uh, I think the underlying story is destroying these wonderful old places which we'll never get back um, but I digress so this is how the British blew up Germany's most remote island 70 years ago so we're talking, this is 1947, so we actually did a, a big attack before this in 1945 during the war. So this is post-war, and Britain took it upon themselves to absolutely make sure that this island was not going to be used as a military base ever again. That's the story. So they blew it to bloody smithereens, which we will watch. See, it's, I believe it's this area that's now a lower crater. That's the new middle land which we created. Apparently, I mean, according to that first article, this is uh, this used to have ancient burial remains up until the 19th century. So we've been clearing this slowly for almost 200 years, really. Right. So this is the damage, the befores and afters. Uh, this guy actually has, so this is the 1945 attack during the war when the, uh, the RAF launched the devastating air raids against Helgoland. Right, there we go. So the small island in the North Sea had no real tactical importance. There was an airfield on the smaller island only to only able to take around a dozen or so Messerschmitts and a U-boat pen on the main island, which could hold three subs. So this guy is just kind of taking, he's questioning why the attack was so, you all right mate? Why the attack was so extensive on the 18th of April 1945 by the British. It looks like we sent <laughs> bloody everything we had. You all right mate? <laughs> um, so yeah, here's the list from the 18th of April 1945. We had 969 aircraft, 617 Lancasters. Oh, so this is, this is it broken up. Um, 332 Halifaxes and 20 mosquitoes all attacked within an hour and a half. Bam bam. Three Halifaxes were lost. I'm not sure he was attacking back after all that. <laughs> Are you okay, mate? Oh dear. The doggy got a cold, I think. Do, 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 do. So, we're just going to look at the extensive damage that was caused. Right here. So if we zoom, zoom. Oh, we can't zoom. Yes, we can a little bit. Good. Okay. So this is before the attack on the 15th of April. So you can just see a lot went on in this area in particular as far as uh, what it was being used for by Hitler and his friends. Here's the, the bombs dropping live. Don't know if we can go in. No, it's a shame. So that must be their air base. There was, what did you say, it was enough for 12 planes? But all those bombs, you can just see them. Right, the devastation. All gone. I mean, the lighthouse did all right, but everything else. It's actually quite a few did all right. This guy looks okay. Well done. But everything else, absolutely wiped out in an hour and a half and that's what you're left with again just a lot big old buildings gone and then uh, obviously the belief was there was loads of tunnels under here at the same time plus all the uh, defences and fortifications added on by Hitler at the time all gone just to be sure that no one uses it as a military tactical place ever again. But look at it. So here's the uh, before and after actually. Is that gonna disappear? Hope so, yeah, good. Um, so this photograph's taken of Heligoland before and after the attack by the Bomber Command on the 18th of April. So there's on the left. All there. So this is the smaller attack apparently. I mean, 1947 is supposed to be the big boy. They, they even dubbed it Operation Big Bang. Uh, just to wipe it off the face of the earth, but apparently no, they only wanted to write it off as an option, not blow it up completely, even though they stuffed all the tunnels with 
Mm, what was it? 900,000 tons of explosives? <laughs> it's a lot. But we'll, we'll get to those figures in a minute, hopefully. I think it's here somewhere. But as you can see, all gone. Even these places that look like, I don't know, football. Maybe a racing pitch, like in velodrome, who knows. But no time for fun. All gone. Some of these buildings and structures just looking a bit more old school than you'd expect as well. All gone. So that's 1945. Actually, a couple more actually. So that's the uh, the U-boat shed garage. Uh, enough for three submarines. In fact, this was a massive tactical advantage for Hitler, so it must have been really important. Three boats in there. What else we got? There you go, just more damage. If you ever want to be anything when these things are happening, be a tree. They always seem to do very well. Okay, I think we're going to see a photo of that before it was blown up. So I think that's the Biophysics Research Centre, I believe. Which hopefully we see. I, I have seen a nice photo of that place before that happened. Here's your boys. Who are they? 18th of April. Are they the defence? Probably all gone. It's not. It's not. It's not fuck around. Don't think they would have survived that. But apparently, all the civilians. I don't know if there were civilians on the land at the time of that bombing. But if they were, apparently they did really well by hiding in the um, the tunnels that had been dug out for ammo and general storage that you need during a war, which you know I don't know too much about. Probably should know about. Right, more damage. We go in. Braille. Braille. Oh, too far. Jesus. There we go. Okay. So, which attack is this? Name that attack. Unfortunately, no dates on that, but it does look like the... Um, the 1947 one when we all decided it was okay to blow the shit out of this. Yes, it's the Big Bang. There we go. Apparently, I forgot how many meters into the air. It's 12,000 feet into the air was the mushroom cloud, apparently. Pretty big. It wasn't a nuclear bomb. It wasn't an atomic bomb. It was just a bunch of explosives. Uh, old school. Absolutely rammed with it. Apparently, the explosion one wasn't as big as expected. But who knows? They're never going to admit that it was not supposed to be like that, are they? We just spent how much on these bombs? There you go. Complete devastation. 1952 this one. So this is af years after they finally, I mean five years on. Still nothing, no movement. I don't know what's happening that side. Hopefully, I think I have got a photo of just how big the crater is that was caused by that explosion because they filled the tunnels with explosives. Uh, they collapsed and completely took out that whole populated area. You can still see the uh, the lighthouse doing pretty well over there, though. Oh, Team Lighthouse. Keep going. There we go, like I said, be a tree. Always be a tree. Some normal peoples of the time. They wore normal coats just like you and me. And jumpers. Good choice, sir. So there you go. Is that it? No, we've got a bit more. The lighthouse. Something about this lighthouse having loads of floors underneath it, even now that you can't visit. So you can visit the island. You can go and visit some of these um, underground tunnels and networks that were put in place during the Second World War, apparently. Um, but the two bottom windows, it said they were fake. So I'm not too sure what the plan is now, but yeah, there's loads more rooms down there where you cannot go. All these look like Balamori, but it's actually just the old lobster houses, apparently. Big lobster population of lobster eaters. Very posh. So yeah, I believe this is all in a bigger crater now, and that's our fault. This is still doing okay. 
sea wall defense is still doing okay. I don't know if those are the original ones that we saw earlier, but maybe. Here you go, big hats. I don't know if they were to defend from flying shells, but they might have done the trick if they were made of tree. There you go, and a few German adverts. Moving on. There you go. Big hits. Oh, we got a good one, yeah, beautiful. Ready. There you go, so you can see that the architecture was extensive before the attack. I didn't actually check the population numbers. I think it's below a thousand at the time. I don't know what its peak was, but I do know, I think as far as their um, Frisian language, which should be the official language of the island now, I think 500 people talk it. But it is a, a recognised language. There you go. So that's what people do to landscapes. Bear that in mind whenever you think nothing's possible or anything's insane because that was possible without the help of nuclear warfare apparently. Okay. Don't know how that did so well. It's quite it's concerning. So now I think it's time to get some footage on the go. So uh, I'm going to leave the background music running because it might be nicer. Where well, here you go. This is the uh, Helgoland B bombed in 1950. Well, 1950 is the footage. This should be 1947. Oh yeah, they bombed the shit out of the graveyards. There's, uh, I've got a picture of the church that used to be there. And the one they replaced it with. If you're a fan of uh, pyramids, hang on. Just hang on. Really tall pyramids. Modern ones. Great. I believe this goes forward onto another relevant video. So I'm going to let it tick over. We might get a treat to an advert. Just want to hit the sea base. Yeah, there we go. This is the one. The Big Bang, Operation Big Bang by the UK. And a little word from our sponsors at Coca-Cola, Google, Facebook, Instagram, all the good shit. Netflix, Microsoft. Oh my God, what can go wrong? Get out. Get out of my face. Right. World War II, it was Hitler's base for the Battle of the Atlantic. New boat pens, gunning placements, and underground storage tunnels are due to be blown up by thousands of tons of high explosives. They'll be fired by submarine cables and wireless transmission from the Navy ships nine miles away. At the fourth pip of the BBC time signal, Lieutenant Commander Frank Graves of London pushes the button. Big button. Boom. There you go, 12,000 feet into the air. Not a nuke. 7,000 tons of bombs, depth charges and high explosives detonate from within the island. A 12,000 foot high column of smoke goes up. From the plane, this is the air picture of the explosion. Wow. Hey, they weren't messing around. Submarine pens, coast batteries and eight and a half miles of underground tunnels are blown sky high. It's the biggest man-made explosion since the atom bomb went off at Bikini. Whatever remains, it is improbable that the island can ever again be used as a war base. Here you go. There's the final narrative message for you. It will never again be used as a war base. Or an IKEA. Alright. A bit more devastation for you. There you go. 
not the best image, but I just thought it did show the extent of the damage. Completely blown in half, made it all go. Dustified almost. It's just, it's beyond destruction. It's a breakdown of every material on the island, where and when possible. Aye. Great, so this is what we did have. Um, this is the difference, right? So this is a drawing, yeah. I forgot what year this was actually. Does it say? Oh no, not too sure on the year, but I'm pretty sure this was 1800s. Late 1800s. Nonetheless, look at that. Everyone looking pretty damn happy. Look at day out in St. Ives. There you go. So yeah, you can either take the stairs like a poor for boy. He obviously didn't have 50 cents on him. Because you can take this bloody lift all the way up to the upper land. Um, you'll see what happens with that in a moment. But, uh, that's what we're talking. This is a, a proper place that didn't need absolute destruction because imagine having this as a place to visit now. We haven't got many left where you can just go and see what we were capable of properly. This is like, it's almost like building a dam. It's impressive and no one asks the questions anymore about how it was done. Mad. Why as well? Why all this structure? Just for the road? All of this just for another road. And it was worth it. All of this just for this, so we can have a road. So we're gonna go home. Mad. Great, there is another one looking the other way, I believe. Yep. There you go. people, very fancy fancy, not doing too badly by the looks of it. Villa Elizabeth, apparently there's not many, I mean that won't even be, a, would that be, even be a British, yeah it's got to be isn't it, um, but a lot of like the, what would be seen as British influence is pretty much gone from the island now, bar a few road names and maybe a church. Which I think was dedicated to Queen Victoria. There you go, don't know what's going on down there. They've got some kind of electricity as well, all sorted. Sorted with lampposts anyway, I'm not sure how they're getting their electric over wind power, or if this is all gas. Uh, another thing to dig into really, just to see how this was ran. What's the infrastructure saying? Who knows? Very beautiful though. There we go. Flying boats. Oh, all that effort. That, that looks rubbish. Oh no, there's the horizon. We're very high. Speaking of. <sighs> Onward. Mm. There you go. All that nicety gone. Where? What was behind that? Okay, we've got some reference now. So we've got some kind of tall, tippy building. Oh, can we not see how far out? There's something here. I mean, they took the photo really close as well, so you don't get to see this. That's annoying. Um, yeah, we can't see the good bit. Show us the good bit. Everything gone. Go back here. The comparison. Are these all lightning conductors or are they something else? How much are we using radio at this time? Or what else? How much? I mean, I think it's a stormy area, so maybe. But I'm not sure when lightning rods came into use. Something to think about. Look at anywhere old. The amount of bloody spires and uh, 
aerials just poking up everywhere when there's not even electricity or radio to be concerned about. There's a lot of it. Great. Moving along. So, yeah, this is uh, the current church. That's been built post-explosion. So this is uh, St. Nicolai's, which I believe is, if there's a plate on there, I think for Queen Victoria of England. But I'm not too sure. But uh, very big. And can I get a big one? Let me see. There's a little boat on the top. I can't really see. Yeah, it's a tiny boat. Right at the top. Terrible choice of tiling, if that's the effect. But you know, that's as good as it gets now. That's what you get from uh, the 21st century. Whereas, this is what was there before. Eighteen ninety-five. Yeah. So this is probably the area that we saw earlier in the video where they're picking up all the gravestones. It's probably this area. I think they. Uh, this is on the upper land. I'm not sure what flag they're flying at this point. Or even now. It's wonderful. Who knows with the influence is that British influence? Not too sure. It looks quite castle-like. Very sturdy. Built for purpose. Whatever that purpose was. Who knows? What's the grave saying? Yeah, ultimately Christian. Confirmed. Right. So that's what we swap out for. <laughs> we've got all the technology in the world. We think we've even cracked alien tech now and uh, reverse engineered spaceships, but that is what you can get with all that knowledge. Figure shit before. What were they thinking? What were they thinking? Moving on. Right, this is inside that church, I think. I'm not sure what year this comes from, but I just thought it was interesting because this guy looks incredibly chilled out. And these look quite similar to cannabis plants. It's a bit of a tree, which puts me off. It's not, it's not got the buds, but those leaves, I'm not sure if they're, they're strikingly a symbol for another kind of plant, but this guy looks very, very happy with where he is. He's just relaxing. He's surrounded by this. I'm not actually sure what the acacia bush leaves look like, but uh, worth a dig. I just thought that was pretty pretty. Right, and some postcards from before the havoc. Look what they had. When we were mentioning spires and flagpoles and aerials, and just look. If they could put them on in the, at the time, they would. And is this all for? Is this all for defense against lightning? I don't know. I actually started on this whole subject this morning. I mean, I was looking at paintings, and the first one that caught my eye was of a steamboat. And then it was an ironclad steamboat, a French one, and then that brought me into this island for some reason. And then from then on, mind blown. Who knew? So I think there's a few more. Is there a few more postcards? Ten reasons to visit. Yeah, pretty beautiful still. Right, I think that was all I wanted from that page. Just saying, I mean, he's done really well the whole time. Clearly must have been a stack at some point. That hasn't seemed to change for fucking years. At least a millennia. Oh, inside, cool. Right, so these are the bunkers, the war stuff that is in situ still. So this is supposedly all the Nazi kind of additions for the war effort. Batteries and whatnot. Um, I thought this was quite cool because you could see the stairs that were leading to something. Can't tell you what. Oh, we can't go in, brilliant. 
something substantial was here. I can't figure out what it was, but I'm guessing lighthouse-esque or something churchy, big, and important enough to walk to the other end of the island to get to, just for that. But nevertheless, absolutely obliterated. Considering they were just trying to disarm this island, not wipe out all of its capabilities. No, they were trying to wipe out its capabilities, not destroy it completely. Um, maybe this was an army fixture, some kind of big anti-aircraft cannon or something, but I doubt it because it looks like they put a lot of effort into this, the brick work. So if it was a quick war effort, effort, then I think it would just be a lot more temporary. And who knows if these were all buildings before and before at this point. Who knows? I mean, this looks looks found very foundation -y. It looks just ready for anything. Like the whole plateau is just... It looks fit for purpose back in the day. So, uh, oh, here's some old sketches, lithographs. From back in the day and what you could expect to see of the people around. Which is nice. Yeah, so I think either a lot of lobsters or a lot of laundry, but also quite enough food. So everyone was, apparently, yeah, this is the point here, um, even now it's completely tax-free. It um, has been since the dawn of time, by the sounds of it, and um, so they all make a living just, there's nothing much to do there, so they just openly drink, smoke all the time, they indulge, and that's the lifestyle, even now, which is nice, but it was even better before. So now you can, if you do need cheap fags and beer, this is your place. Even now in 2020, go have a look. Alright, that's what we're going on to. Ah, just more. There you go, it looks like a big advert for some kind of tuna. I don't know what's going on here, but it's a big kind of summer, summer. Catching the fishies. Happy, like a, a really nice black pool. Really nice black pool. Um, it's just see, yeah, you search, you just get mostly military action, whether it's recent or fucking old. It's always kicking off. Zeppelins crashing around it. There you go, that must be its flag. There you go. Epic floods or something going on, big weather, pat, like disruption. It just seems to get absolutely hammered constantly whilst also being looked after and inhabited at all times. They never leave it. There we go. So... More. So there's our lighthouse friend, a survivor. Now loads of tech, probably just weather checking. It looks like they have got a close photo of that actually somewhere. Do -do 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 -do. Again, maritime activity. Stacks. Probably an old stack, who knows? Who knows? The layers of history we could dig into, but where's the rest? Where did it all go? It's all under here somewhere. Why is this still here? Look at these. Either artistic license was being enforced here, or these look a bit more. They're not fluted, they just look nice, don't they? Almost unnatural compared to this. I don't know what kind of weather does this. High winds at all times, sandblasting, who knows. Old ships, steamships, the church still sticking up there. All these stacks. Almost looking like foundations for whatever we used to be on here, right? This whole thing. Just structural support all the way around, who knows. Why not? Go. Moving along, time's getting on. Ah, it's, a, it's a nice photo with the update. A Lugo Land Lighthouse on a sunny day. There you go. Beautiful. There's that church, the new uh, super modern great great church. No expense spared. Lots of tech. What are they monitoring? The not so important, important island that you can 
I mean, to kill an island, this is cool. I haven't read all of this yet, but um, this is worth a look if you can. Let's just show you where the site is. Move me over there. There you go. Exolangten.com forward slash Helgoland. Uh, really cool. Very quick history um, of the early history there. It moves along quite fast, but it's a nice roundup of what went down when we had power, when we gave it away, when we got it back, and the Napoleon Wars, it's all in there. Nice little timeline of how it looked at various times. Okay. So it's 899, we've seen that one. Well, we haven't seen that on a big scale, but that looks amazing. There you go, and then, so the first barrage during the war and the final Big Bang after war. Cleared. Cleared. Next. Right, so this is apparently what lay beneath um, after Hitler had his go with it. Can I zoom in? A little bit, there we go, there we go, there we go. A little bit, right, cool. Where are we? So 200 foot high cliff. 250 foot high cliffs, gun battery your friends. So that might be the thing that got blown up that we saw earlier, who knows. The everlasting lighthouse. And he dug all this underneath. I forgot how many miles, 30 miles? And it's only a mile. I'm sure the uh, the island was a mile. But the there was 30 miles of tunnels made. So the story goes that these tunnels were filled with the explosives by the British. And this all collapsed. Right, let's go over here, hopefully. Yep. All of this collapsed. Whoop. So this is middle land now. This comes right down here. This is where our old stairway is. It looks like they already cleared. The old stairs. Where's that? I'm not sure what side the, uh, the lift was. But it's already gone at this point. Power station, right? Yeah, got their own power. Don't know if that was there when we were looking just. So here's just um, the island is now being cleared up of its armaments and demolished. So this is the uh, the news in Britain. Telling everyone Wagwan with this island that we can't see from here. When was this? Zoom out a little bit. We'll have a read. Okay. At the beginning of the month, a graphic description of the Heli Heligoland today was published in the Daily Telegraph. It came from the pen of the commander Kenneth Edwards, who had made an examination of the island fortress. To top of it, known oh, the top of it known as known to the Germans as the Oberland, the Upper Land, he reported, is almost flat. It's about a mile long and a half mile across at its widest point. There are more than eight miles of tunnels, eight miles. Uh, the lowest of them lined with English brick was constructed when Heligoland was a British colony. All the German built tunnels are lined with concrete. The most modern were made in 1940 when the, the, when the Todd's Labour Organisation conscripted 25,000 slave labourers to do the work. How did you get 25,000 people there, eh? Um, so when I was saying 2,000 people to build a building, 25,000 people, right, uh, to do the work. Of the dockyard and the residential quarter to the east and the southeast, there are only about one or two, about two or three small buildings standing. The U-boat pens, which held three boats, according to that of one. The Lewis Tunnel is wide enough to take the light railway, which is about 10 foot high. Just off the galleries of the tunnel is a complete underground hospital with several wards, a dispensary and an up-to-date operating theatre. Splints, bandages and drugs lie about. During the big raid just before Germany's capitulation, the old town on the Oberland and the residential quarter on the flatland below were obliterated. Oberland is just a mass of bomb craters. At the extreme northwest of Oberland is the Schroeder battery, consisting of three 12-inch guns. One of the guns sustained a direct hit from a heavy bomb which burst close to the breach. The gun and all of its loading arrangements were completely wrecked and the turret had been ripped off half of its armour plate and flung back like the lid of an open sardine tin. Back to the sardine tin from the postcard maybe? Who knows? Uh, we go. Uh, where were we? Upside 
Sardines in. At the end of the island too, there was a big radar station, but only parts of the outside equipment now exist. On the southeast corner of the Oberland, there was a battery of five to nine inch guns, which could also be used against aircraft. There are also batteries of four to five inch anti-aircraft guns and a large number of light anti-aircraft weapons on the Balfour's type. All these have been demolished, either by our bombing or by the Germans since their surrender. The only structure on, October, on, on the Oberland, which is intact, uh, is the control tower of the Great Fall. I'm not sure where the control tower of the Great Fall is. It can't be the lighthouse, I don't, I'm not too sure. Right, that was interesting. In the sky... Actually, it was just a bunch of nice photos, because it, it gave you some uh, context. This is modern, this is someone's blog, walkislands.co.uk. Um, I think this was just explaining that it was a 7,000 kilogram bomb made this hot. These are the size of the Kratos. Uh, this might be the site of like, the whole racetrack thing we saw earlier. Might have put it back to use. Stairs down the cliff. Not too sure. Again. Still standing. That wall's still doing well. Plenty of birds to see, apparently. There you go. Beautiful. Oh, just some oldie photos of the area and the batterings it, ta it took them uh, throughout time. Uh, this seems to be mostly World War II from a German perspective. Um, oh yeah, this Franz Schenksky. Apparently it sounds like a photographer for the Axis who ended up taking photos on behalf of the British and then releasing the fact that they'd taken apart all the weapons from World War I. So they all got pissed off with this person this photographer, this artist. Not too sure. Oh, everyone loving Hitler turning up through the windows. Definitely give them hope. He obviously gives them hope at the time. Devastation. 1944, so this is prior bombings to the big one in 45. This is the big one, 7,000 bombs in 104 minutes. Which isn't unheard of. I mean, you look at even the uh, the air raids on Birmingham and Liverpool and Leeds and all that insane amount of bombs during World War Two. Insane amount of planes knocking around. Oh, here we go. Now we can see that old stairway. Can we go up? There it is. Right. So there it is. All gone now. All them nice buildings from earlier on. Which one was it? that one? No. Not too sure. But yeah, all destroyed. This is the 21st. This is five days after the attack. Just took it all out. Is that the control tower? It might be. Might not even be a lighthouse now. I don't think it was. Yeah, some surrounding wildlife. Not sure what these were. If the I think these. I can't tell if these are all carriages to carry horses or people. At first, I thought they were little, little beach huts. Um, but every time I look at them now, is this like just where they were living during the rebuild? Not too sure. If anyone knows, or is this the view from June? Right, this is the other island. Is it we're looking at? Heligos from the other island. The size of it. But what are these? Maybe they were just little taxis to take around the island. Probably. Who knows? Should probably learn German. Some German seals. Hollow. Some Germans. This guy with his arm around everyone. A creepy brother, maybe. I'm not too sure. Does it say who these guys might be? Uh, I'm not going to have a guess, but yeah, these are the people, I don't know if it's at the time, post-war, but, you know, just humans, we're all humans, looks a bit like a wedding, don't know why that's there, but anyway, 
Okay, old map, as you can see the two land masses joined by that um, sand flat at the time. Looks like this could be between 800 AD to 1649. So just imagine the amount of bloody stuff that's gone on in this place since. It was relatively quiet for all that time. We got uh, is that Neptune, could be Poseidon here. Sea people. Can we go in on that? Oh, we can. Oh. Not great. But big fish. Big fish. What's that? Big place. Who knows? Too much going on, but scattered important places. Pretty much everywhere. Is this the island as a whole before it was completely blown apart? Or was this it? Quite hard to get your head around that map. But there, there you go. More pictures of the control tower and church. There's all the tech that they're using now. It's like wind direction and weather stuff. Not sure what well, that does. Lots of radar equipment. This is, uh, yeah, loads of floors underneath this that you can't get to. Or you can't enter. There's it before. So that must be your control tower that was left behind, yeah. Not sure what this was. But it's all gone now. Wow, is this all part of the old building? Not too sure, is that an old tunnel road? These are just down here. Purposefully placed by the looks of it. Jaggedy rocks. I don't know if what they're implying with these, if uh, it was a structure at some point that's been completely blown apart or natural left behind rock. No. Little steel rods here. So yeah, part of old structures. Buried deep now. There's the structure, I imagine. Maybe this is the structure. Buried. Who knows? There it is. More tech. Everyone's getting free view. Happy, happy days. I'm just getting pissed all the time watching. Oh no, they don't watch BBC Free anymore. It's all they had. They are more steel. Mesh and supports. Rods throughout the concrete structures. Looks like Hitler got a lot done as far as concrete structures go. You look at any abandoned engineering program, it's just full of stuff that Hitler managed to get done in a relatively short amount of time, whilst being a particularly busy fellow. Iron work? Not too sure. Bit of a missile, maybe? Older than that? Who knows? Ooh, bit of a Strabant bomb. Maybe. Big bits of concrete structure. All these like little blocks. I don't know what they're for. If they were for the uh, to stop boats getting close before or what they were doing, like little guard post concrete blocks. They look like those little bouncy ball toys you used to have as a baby that vibrated and shit. It was pretty cool. Looks like it was covered in a tarmac-like substance, but is no longer. Thick, big builds. Still lots of rods. Structure, structure. Look, is that barbecue? Why not? Yeah, we're all chilling. This looks like uh, someone's made a campfire out of the old stuff. What was that there before? Yeah. There were once trolls, you know. Big bits of wood. Huge. What, for lintels? For weaponry? Who knows? These looking man-made and huge man-made and huge is that that? yeah that must be inside there, there you go all covered maybe with a tarmac like material at the time big blocks loads of shit, that is a barbecue isn't it? <laughs> there we go 
they get just more structured. It, devastation, the power of these bombs must have been insane. I bet half of this has flown miles as well, from, well, a mile from the other end of the air. Uh, what's that? It's more structure poking out from under the ground level. We're not too sure how much regrading went on on this post-war or if this all got... What's that? Is that literally a... A section of sediment? Underlying bedrock? I don't know. More smashed up concrete. Big, big bangs. Concrete always does quite well. But it couldn't hack this. More pipe work. Not so lovely architecture now, wow. Buried mound, old building, who knows? Looks like all of this is buried, I don't know what they're getting at. Another buried structure, maybe. Who knows? Some kind of rod. Well, thank God for this guy's little gallery. It's nice, isn't it? The old more buried things. What's all that doing under there? Low grade. What was it for? So these might be the British bricks when it was colonised, right? Does this count as British brickwork? Bizarre. That's been cut. Anyway, I think, uh, if, wow. What's that gravestone? Top of a, an old lead coffin? Who knows? Big ditches, big changes in the landscape, all caused by man. What won't we do? All this? Big holes, big bomb bombs. Apparently, they don't even have cars on this island. They have like a few taxis on the lower land and um, a police car. Very low crime. No, I don't think it's governed. No tax to pay. It's as free as it gets. Uh, what's? <laughs> wow. So that's a huge brick structure. Hang on. Wow. All of this. All that for an entrance of a tunnel that was pre-existing, I doubt. Was all of this brickwork before? Probably. There's more to it. What the hell is that? Just in the middle of the cliff. But it looks like all of this used to be this. This is how deep it goes. I mean, I didn't even expect that to turn up. <laughs> but... And now you've got to question everything you see in this bricked area. There you go, another, another tunnel there. Yeah, lock it onto the tunnel. There we go. Some brickwork in there. Some very purposeful, purposeful little build. Looks like jail cell kind of white brick going on. Wow, we more buried structures. Apparently home to all kinds of ancient burials and mounds and yeah, a sacred land completely obliterated by mankind to hide what I think is some very important lessons from the past that we could probably do with right now as a society. It looks like they had it made. They didn't need anything. They had boats, but it didn't seem like they needed to go anywhere. Surrounded by fish. The uh weather pattern, wow. The weather patterns, all fine for food. Apparently food was really abundant. Everything is just an indulgent society where you can just enjoy being alive. I don't know how much work you have to do. Apparently loads, look at that. Drainage network then, built into the hills. Again, looking like the bricks are part of whatever this used to be, this cliffside. This looking more like poured concrete now. So, uh, war, uh, wartime additions. Some foundation. Looks like some kind of pylon might have stood on there, I don't know. Maybe harnessing power. Before the power station was built, who knows? There we go. Maybe a nice house there, or that is some kind of shelter. 
bomb damage, no doubt. <sighs> ah, yeah, little shout out going for bird watching or bomb watching, but either way, plenty of both to do in the 40s. Maybe the bird's bugging off for a bit, a bit noisy. So this has to be old structure then, we can only assume. What was it and when? When was it built? Are these... What are they? <laughs> Don't know. Wow, what are they? So little white pyramids being put up here. That'll mean something to some. Go and look at pyramids just in general across the whole world if you want to link them all to whatever you think you know about ancient Egypt or whatever your school told you, it's wrong. Um, so go ahead and look into pyramids everywhere around the world and how they all seem to line up and they're all from really, really long ago. All right, mate, there we go. Okay. Could just be a landmark, eh? Ooh. One, six, eight, oh, oh, who knows? Lots to see. I mean, I wanted, I didn't want to spend the whole time looking at this, but it's everything. Look at Two different ages, quite clearly. Not quite as sophisticated as even the bricked up versions that we've seen just. Older than that. Bought out by who? And what was it for? What were they hiding at the time? I mean, to say that a whole other limestone island disappeared purely because we were selling chalk in hard times. What really happened to these places? Because they're just wiping it all out. It doesn't even look like they're done with the job, but I hope they are because I want to visit. And apparently the British are quite welcome and they don't hate it. they don't hate us. Oh, uh, you don't have to say sorry. Uh, they're quite understandable. We're just a bit pissed off that after the war they moved everyone out and then continued to use the island as a bomb test site. And they eventually two German school kids or university students, not too sure, just got on the island and waved some flags and the, the attack stopped. And they gave it back to Germans. A quick brief history. Uh, not too sure how true any of that was, but I'm pretty sure. Right. Well, so much. Again, just more buried structure you can only uh, surmise now. What's all this about? None of it can be naturally placed because we've blown it all to shit. What were they destroying? And who's cutting the grass? It's doing a wonderful job. So I don't know how, many, how much cattle they have on, on this island. But the grass is well kept. Well, I'll have to thank the guy who posted all these photos because it's everything we didn't... I didn't have a clue any of this was here. Old structure. Come the cliff edge. Bunkers. Oh, not too sure what that is. Some kind of... Oh, I couldn't tell you very unnatural looking stone with some kind of washer on the end, I'm not sure. Um, so yeah, very like poured concrete war buildings over here. See a lot of it on the coast of Britain too. Um, a lot of them are also left in place. And we've got some that go down the, uh, the major rivers in England, I'm aware. And uh, they were built just in case of a German invasion. Never used, but never destroyed, just left there now. So it's probably our version of ancient history, which is nice and boring, isn't it? Keeps us occupied, looking for the stuff that doesn't matter. Okay. Oh, beautiful. Dave loves scouts. Who knows? Good to know. Stay away from Dave. Terrible. Oh, oh no. Why is that there? Okay, we're going to go... To, I was looking at these... Uh, Serpents on stakes and staffs and on crosses the other day. Uh, we'll do. We'll go to that. They're everywhere throughout history. Uh, obviously, now quite massively associated with the healthcare side and the hospitals and the NHS and doctors and science. Um, don't know if it's the WHO use that symbol. It's everywhere. 
apparently holds some kind of significance on this island. And why wouldn't it? Because everything seems to happen to this island. We have a German instruction board on Vivi Bank. <laughs> I hope the destruction stops. I really do. I'm going to run out of things to say. If we're allowed to leave our residential countries anymore. But if you can't get out here, uh, look around your own towns because I bet there's so many things that don't add up. Just look properly. Look at buildings where there's window frames coming out the ground halfway buried and then just question why they're there. Would you build it like that? Does it make any sense why it looks like that? Um, come up with your own storyline. Fuck it. The one they're giving you is bullshit. So make it up. Why do you want to just repeat the same story as everyone else? Nothing to talk about. The people might think you're crazy. But then, I think they're crazy for not questioning this stuff. I mean, did none of this was on purpose today. We looked at our painting, and now years and thousands of years of history unfolded in a couple of hours. We've recorded it. Hopefully this saves you doing the job, but please go and look for more yourselves. Um, plenty to see and do on the old internet, and this is the stuff we're allowed to see, right? So just more, there's a bit more devastation. This is the winter of 1954. Looks like they've started to rebuild after the 47 bombing. Um, gas silos, are they? Not too sure what they're running on here. If they're in the North Sea, I imagine it's gas. Kind of chimney building. Complete regrade of the area. Uh, just a reset, by the looks of it. Big old reset. Oh, there we go, some more. So here's all the, the whole bit of the place that collapsed. Really bad. I think the other end is the other. This this whole bit took the hit. You don't get many photos from the other side, weirdly. I mean, I have been looking. Uh, across. Oh, just more postcards and the niceties of what was before the madness. Uh, not sure what year this is supposed to be, but it looks like everything pre 1950 anyway can only be seen in postcards now and barely any photos exist. Um, so this is what you have as reference. Which is a shame, because it looks like they have a lot. There you go. Oh, land. The aquarium. Oh yeah, apparently there's a new aquarium there now. It looks like there's an underwater tunnel you can visit. I don't know if that's tunneling under the bit that we blew up or if they've just used it for a different purpose. But it looks like just yeah you got a sea life centre now so you can thank us for that. Like Birmingham's not too bad if you fancy a trip out. Uh, we are a high risk area so make your own decision. Uh, okay. There we go, a nice little view of that. It looks like it was we caught it in some Pretty upgraded times. I wonder why they never tidied that up at any point. There you go, there's the lift, the old buildings that were. That immovable stack. That was just stand regardless. And I think. Oh, I thought this was interesting. Basically, just going right, right back in history for a second and to say that these people were hunter gatherer idiots and. Um, I mean, this is going back only to 350 BC, which is still a long time ago, but this is uh, attributed anyway to the Helgoland painter, which looks like a bowl, very good with fish. Obviously, fish is their, their whole thing there, but they had the materials, the artistic flair to make these things and even turn this bowl, which looks like it's made of wood, all the way back with bowl Jesus. Um, looks like a nice little hole in the middle for dipping sauces. Maybe some Mary Rose, a lot of prawns around the edge. Who knows? But there you go. So that's how far back this history does go, just to hark back to what we've done to it in such a small amount of time. We've fucking destroyed it and ruined everything. But hey, nothing new. So we're going to leave this, I think, with some drone footage. I'm going to turn the volume up on this one. I'm going to let it fly. Thank you for joining me. Um, 
I think that went well. I don't know how long this has ended up being, but I've enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Uh, that's how I'll go land. Go and look some more. I'm going to find somewhere else that blows my mind a little bit, and I'll do a video on it when I can. Um, thanks for coming, and enjoy the flyover. Why?